Hi guys, so in this series of videos, what I'll do is I'll be going through the Azura robot. And for my uni in my first year, I had to basically build a line following autonomous robot. And they gave us this kit, the Azura robot. So this is what it looks like. You can do some quite cool things with it. So if you do know what it is and you want to get the software and download it all, um, you want to go on this guy's website, Jürgen. It's, the website's in German, but you can translate it to English. And then he gives you the instructions on how to install the various different software that you need to code at the Azura and then flash it onto the Azura, etc. So I'll leave a link to this website here. It's just azura.keyhome.de. So when you're learn when you're first learning to program the Azura, it gets a bit confusing. They give you a book to go type in Azura Robot PDF. Then the first link that comes up. You get this book which is it's actually in English and it goes through just a whole bunch you know how to build it etc 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 which if you're watching this I assume you've probably already done if you scroll down to page what is it page 54 here yeah page 54 it gives you your first program when I was learning this I didn't have a clue what any of this meant never done C programming before in my life what I would say is that if you haven't done any C programming, probably before doing this, what I found was very helpful. C programming course YouTube. What I found was very helpful was this guy's one. Here you go. If you go on his on this, what if you watch this whole video? I I finished this. Three hours and forty six minutes, go through practice all of the various different codes that he teaches here. And then you're gonna you're gonna find that it's gonna be so much easier for you to code the Azura because you'll be far more uh, used to the language. If you have programmed in C before then, I mean you won't even really need these videos. Not or well, not these early videos anyways. But yes, if you haven't, I'd say practice with these videos first. Go through, learn what printf is, scanf. You won't be using those with user, but it, it won't take you long to get through these. And trust me, it'll make a big, big difference. Cool. This is the first program that you, they get you to write on the user. Quick side note as well is that on this module, for me, I ended up getting, I think, 85%. So I did very well, but a lot of the guys in my class, they struggled. Mostly because what they did was they went, oh, this program is useless. I need a line following program. And so they just literally just went to the end of the book. And started, you know, doing all of this stuff. And they ended up very confused. And what happened with all of them was that uh, at the end of the module, they ended up going back to the beginning and then learning, trying to learn the basics from there. And it just became a mess. So my advice to you is, learn from the from the ground up learn what this stuff means if you know what this means then no problem let's just copy and paste all of this into our code editor let's just clean this up a bit so what we'll do is we'll put a comment let me uh can i zoom in yeah my first program So, if you don't know what any of this stuff is, uh, like what I'm doing right now, uh, which is basically tidying up the program, um, like I said, watch the tutorial video. So, um, I've got a comment here, my first program. Then you've got the uh, hashtag include and the zero dot H. Um, don't worry about the squeaky line for now. So basically, what you're, what you're doing here is you're you're telling your program that there's a header file which is another file full of code which basically explains to the process or to the program where it needs to go to go and get the extra more difficult code don't worry too much about this for now but it's a header file and as long as you're following the instructions on Jürgen's website as long as you follow importantly downloading the library export unzipping it into your C program data directory. As long as you do all of that correctly, then you'll have the header file there. And when you start writing code, your program will know where to go to 
it will know where to go to pull more information for uh, what it needs basically which you'll see in a minute so here you have the main function if you've watched the tutor tutorial or you've done any C programming you obviously know what the main function is here's here's the next part so here you've got a function call which is explained in this header file and it's called obviously init init stands for initialize initialize and what that does is that initializes can't even spell it initializes the microcontroller ports the only thing that you need to remember for this init bracket semicolon is that whenever you're writing code for your zero you have to put in it <laughs> at the beginning of the main function uh, the reason why is because you need to initialize the microcontroller uh, and the ports before you can do anything else so that's that's a very important point next point so here you've got a, f uh, a function call again which goes back to the header file status led the status led is let's see if we can get it uh, where am I? Was there a robot? So the status LED is, if you can see it, no, it's a tiny. Anyways, it's one of the LEDs on the front of the Azura. That one, I believe, yeah. That white one there, that's the status LED. So what that does is that, oh, yeah, it's that one. It's because you've got two back LEDs, two rear LEDs, and you've got a status LED there which flashes. Yeah. So, this status LED refers to that LED there and what you put in the brackets is what you're sending and what you're telling that status LED to do. So the status LED, um, small white LED at, um, or next to, next to switch. And what you're doing is you're telling it to take the color red so turn red right so there are um a few colors that that led can turn they uh they tell you what they are in the book let's see if we can find them um, oh dear don't know if it was that one now but yeah, you want to be using this book. Trust me. Um, I believe it's red, yellow, and green. And then maybe an orange. It's been about six months since I've coded. Okay, so you've got red. You've got green. Red. Definitely red and green and yellow. I'm just wondering if there's an orange. Okay, there you go. So, it tells you here that the valid parameters what you can put into the status led is off so you can have the, have it go off green red or yellow that's why you shouldn't listen to me i thought there was an orange but seems like there isn't cool so we can make that red do you think the important thing is you have to keep it in capital capitals we can make that off we can make it obviously yellow and finally we can make it green now this, it might seem a bit trivial, but it's actually super useful in terms of when you start coding a, a bit more, um, if you want to know if you're, if the robot's doing something or not, you can set the status LED to say, okay, when you detect a line or when you, when one of your um, tactile sensors on the front of the user, uh, these things, when one of them have been pressed, then turn red then turn yellow and it will just be a very good on the fly troubleshooting thing for you so i'd advise you to do that um so we've in initialized the microcontroller ports then we've turned the status led green or in the first program's case oh, red remember to uh, have it in capitals i have you know spent about two and a half hours figuring out why it wasn't working when i had it as red uh, lowercase finally or the last two parts of the program the while loop um if you've watched the tutorials or done any c programming you obviously know what a while loop is 
one thing you might be thinking is why is it while one while one um which you should know uh basically says that this is a, a while loop and it's going to run forever the reason why you want to do that is because you just want once the azura has done the program that you're asking it to do then just run forever but do nothing so it's just a, the book talk, talks a bit about this um I don't know if I can if I'll be able to find it. I haven't gone through this book in a while. Well, one. So you see, it says it said there eternal loop. Um, as your ball condition will never be reached. Yeah. So basically, it's just a way of. Um, let's put uh, eternal loop. A way of stop it of preventing the program from ending and the reason why you want to do that is because at the end of the program you've got return zero which means basically end the program uh, no errors the zero refers to the fact that there's, there's no errors cool so that's it that's literally the first um let's just save it my first First program dot c. So that's it. That's your um, that's your first program. So what what I would advise is make sure you um, write this code out yourself. Ideally, you want to be writing out uh, from the book and not copying and pasting it, like I did. But um, write it out yourself. Run, flash it onto the Azure. See if the um, if you turn the status into the red. Then try it again with green, try it with yellow, try it with off. Um, and if you have watched C's tutorial, one thing that I did, which uh, maybe I'll go through next, would be to use if statements to change the color of the status LED. If you have been, guys, thanks for watching. Cool. We'll go. You'll see that in the next one. Thanks, guys.